Welcome to Action Hour. I'm Lindsay Baker. And today I have the two authors of the book, Paul and Bucky, which is a children's novel. And the Paul in the story, I was going to say the Bucky, is Captain Paul Watson of Captain Paul Watson Foundation. Let's watch this clip. And, and he died. He could have killed us. And he saved our lives. So personally, I feel indebted to him. But I saw something else in that, in that eye, and it was, it was pity. And, and not for himself, but for us, that we could take life so thoughtlessly, so mercilessly. And for what? Spermaceti oil is what they were after. The Russians use it for high heat resistant oil for machinery. And one of the things that they were building with spermaceti oil was intercontinental ballistic missiles. And I said to myself, here we are, destroying this incredibly intelligent, socially complex, wonderful being, the sentient being. And for what? To make a weapon meant for the mass extermination of human beings. And that's when it struck me, we are insane. And from that moment on, I, I said to myself, I'm not going to do what I do for people. I'm going to do what I do for the whales and for the creatures of the sea. They are our clients. Well, welcome, everyone. I want you to meet my guests today, Patty Shanker, author, and David Walega, illustrator of Paul and Bucky. Let me show you that wonderful cover. Ah, oh, you guys, I am so pleased to have you on today. I want to just jump in and ask you a question. I'll start with Patty. Patty, how did you uh, come to get the idea? I assume that you started with the idea. And how did you guys meet and get together and do this? Just give me an overall picture. Well, I've been a supporter of Paul Watson's efforts for over three decades. And thank you for that incredible video of him that really portrays exactly how he feels and the actions he takes because of those feelings. Um, so I've been a big supporter of his and he wrote about this relationship with Bucky in his book Seal Wars, which I think came out like 25 years ago. I was so very touched by this story that I never forgot about it. And um, I started wanting to write a children's book in the last decade or so, and I thought, oh my gosh, that is the perfect story for kids. So I asked his permission, he gave it to me, and David and I have been animal activists for a decade together here in L.A., and um, I've seen his work. He's an amazing artist as well as activist, and I love him, and I love working with him, and I just thought it was a perfect fit, and I think it was. I think his illustrations are just so beautiful, colorful, touching. I do too. Yeah, I wanted to show some of those illustrations. And uh, actually, David, um, I wanted to really talk about how these could be, these could actually be prints. They're so beautiful and so illustrative of the story. One of the questions I wanted to ask you, David, was um, I wanted to ask you how you guys broke up the book, the verses, so that you came up with a con and then came up with a concept to illustrate. So, yep. like, how did you know, you know, where did the thought start and end? And then you had to can you talk a little about your whole process of that? Sure, sure. Our process has been a long one. It's been a couple of years that we've been working on this, but we've been friends within activism and just good friends for, for years now. And she brought this idea of a children's book about Paul's early life. And, and just to fill it in, Bucky is a beaver that he befriended when he was really little. And the story talks about his friendship with this beaver. And um, so Patty had the idea for the story and, you know, it was rough at first because she had a great story, a great idea, and then the special friendship with Paul. And we wanted to make sure that we represented it correctly. And so we just went back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. And then I drew sketches. She would write some more. I would draw some more sketches. It ended up that I needed more and more to fulfill a children's book. It has to be every page pretty much has to be colorful and beautiful. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that Bucky was the true 
star of the story, even though Paul is the catalyst that has inspired millions of people to be, um, you know, warriors for the animals and such. So even the cover, Bucky is pretty much front and center with Paul. Right. But we wanted to make sure the animals were really the focus, even though Paul's the focus, if that makes sense. So um, anyway, we, we've just gone through several iterations of the book and, you, and just by collaborating together, we could see where there was loopholes, where there's, you know, plot holes that I needed to fill, she needed to fill. So it was like, it was truly a collaboration, but it became, it came from Patty's um, devotion to animals and her relationship with Paul and just finding this little nugget that hopefully would inspire kids, especially to keep empathy and 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 remain empathetic, empathetic to towards animals, because we sort of get that weaned out of us. Yeah, I wanted to ask Patty um, about your relationship with Paul. So can you talk about that a little bit? Well, as I said, I have supported his efforts for over three decades now, and I continue to support his efforts. He is the real thing, obviously. He takes direct action. He has put his small boats between the whales and the giant whaling uh, ships of Japan, of the Japanese. I mean, he has been up to Iceland and Canada where the fur seals are clobbered, the baby seals. He gets right in there in the middle of it. And I have so much respect for him for doing all of that. Plus, he's an amazing writer and thinker. And he, I am just honored to know him. And I am so grateful to him for letting me write this book about his childhood, a very significant, pivotal story in his life. Yeah, I want to go through a little slideshow to give people a little bit more of a picture of Paul's work for the people. This will go out internationally, hopefully globally on Unchained TV. Um, and if you haven't downloaded the app, please do so. I'll talk about that later. But let's watch this little slideshow to give people an idea. Wow, that's really touching. I'm going to ask each of you, I'll start with David. Um, did you get a response from Paul regarding your amazing illustrations? It, it was a great honor that um, he, him, he came back to Patty and said how impressed he was with the illustrations, which was a great honor. And because you always want to make sure that you're honoring their inspiration, their memory, being respectful, of course. And so I wanted to make it as colorful and as um, inviting as I could. Um, the story is a little bit rough, but we wanted to make sure that we were being gentle with the readers because we want this to be read to little kids that right. will find, you know, because little kids love animals no matter what. And it's sort of like, weaned out of the out of it as life goes on so if we can make sh make some books and some uh, pieces of art that would inspire kids to remain in love with animals and empathetic that would be the goal and so far that's the response that we've been getting so many people have been buying this for their grandkids their kids and so yeah i was i was so um honored that he was happy with the results and we were extremely careful because we wanted him to be really happy with the results also so yeah no i see these pieces as being standalone illustrations yes. and you notice that there's only one real portrait of paul because i was so nervous about making him look <laughs> well you know what i loved i love the way and i was going to bring this how you brought the animals to the forefront mm -hmm. we see bucky's face but most of the time when we see paul we mm -hmm. see the back of his head 
So, yep. and I really love the way that brings you into the story. I also wanted to compliment you on your illustrative work. Did I, you know, I'm a graphic designer. Did you do that in Illustrator most of the I work? I did. It was all yeah, in Illustrator. Your mastery of Illustrator also is amazing. And yes, if you do turn those into prints, I would love to get one. And I'm sure uh, many people would. But we want to encourage people to buy the book. So let me show you. Um, Let's see, where's the uh, places you can get it? Well, right here it says it's available on Amazon, but actually it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other booksellers online, mm -hmm. uh, Paul and Bucky. And Patty, I wanted to ask you that same question now. What was Paul's reaction and how did you um, tell us a little bit about that moment, if you would, when you talked to him about the, the book, he read well, it. When I first asked him if I could do a children's book based on his his story with Bucky, he uh, what, he liked the idea and he said, yes, go ahead. And at first I started doing a book in a book. I thought maybe I'd have Paul reading to his young son, which he actually has two young sons now, and reading the book about Paul and Bucky. But then I ended up taking that out. So there were, you know, changes along the way. But I... Um, Throughout the process, I would send him the latest versions. Probably he got too many of them, but I wanted to make sure that he liked the direction we were going in, that he had no problems with what we were doing. And of course, we sent him the final edition to make sure he approved, and he did. And he wrote a beautiful uh, thing that's on the back of the book saying how much he liked the book and how much he loved the illustrations and how much uh, uh, um, an encounter with a wild animal can affect a kid's life. And um, that's so true. I think one, I just want to point out one thing. I love the whole relationship of, of Bucky and Paul. It's a very important part. But for me, the other really important part was when Paul's dad says, oh, Buck, uh, oh Paul, get over it. He's just an animal. Well, many of us animal activists and others have heard that throughout our lives. Forget about it, they're just animals. Well, they're not just animals. When you hear that, when you hear any, they're just, you are hearing prejudice. And I love the fact that Paul didn't listen to his dad. He listened to his heart and he went further and did what he did as far as um, releasing the animals and obviously becoming a lifelong, incredible animal activist and um, echo uh, ecologist, I guess I should say. Right. I love that he's a captain and a mariner. I mean, the story is so incredible. I could definitely see uh, sequels to it coming, you know, the adventures of Captain Paul Watson and all of them, you know, there's so many aspects of it as I'm preaching to the choir. Let's watch the second part of of the video I have. save this planet we're not going to save ourselves we're basically at war with ourselves to protect the planet from ourselves and uh, we're doing this for the benefit of all future generations of all species and if we don't win then everybody loses thank you and of course you can find that uh, find more information about the foundation at captainpaulwatsonfoundation.org. We'll put a link to the top if you're interested. Also, of course, yes, we'll put I a also, link. 
Could I add that there is a uh, an auction going on right now for the Paul Watson Foundation? Yeah, so can you speak up, Patty? You're, you're a little yeah. soft. Can you speak soft. up a little? Oh, okay. David, maybe you can mute yourself while you're not talking, but Patty's fading out. Let's try that. Can you, uh, go okay. ahead, Patty. I was just adding that um, there's a an auction right now um, online for the Paul Watson Foundation. So if you're interested in supporting his efforts now, that uh, there's some incredible auction items to be had. So please look at that and support his efforts. As you can see, he's he's a hero for all of us. He certainly is. A little bit later, I'm going to try and go to his website and we'll check that out. But I was going to now ask you, and then I'm going to, let me start with David. Uh, David, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your activism. And I also would like to ask you how you have interwoven your activism with your, your art. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Um, well, I came to activism a little bit later. Um, it was probably in my late 30s or so that I started doing animal rescue. And I worked with an organization up in Seattle where we rescued um, dogs and cats and then farmed animals. And that's when I really, um, I became vegan. I became um, a, a daily activist for the rights of animals because of their exploitation and having that one-on-one -on -one experience with animals that really needed our help. And um, from there on, I just uh, it just became a lifelong passion. And so I'm a photographer, I'm a painter, and um, a lot of it has to do with the animals. I'm a specifically, um, I'm really interested, my real passion is anti-vivisection. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in animals and laboratories and freeing them from that life of abuse. But um, I just, I look at people like Paul Watts and I think of him as up there with Jane Goodall and all these other heroes that have just left everything to pursue this passion to protect animals that don't have a voice. And so um, I, I look at artists like Sukkot and different artists that have used their voice with their artwork and I'm just inspired every day. So just to have a small um, piece of that is so, incredible and then with patty patty's just been a warrior forever so it was just such an honor to be a part of this and to be friends with her and then um by by uh relation be friends with paul um so it's just an exciting exciting venue to be in right now i think um the children's book world is exploding so if we can get more of these stories into the hands of kids that i would yes. have loved a book like this when i was a little kid i mean i had a few but this is just such an obvious inspiration for people to look at to inspire their kids to be compassionate for the animals uh, it's just um it, it's it's just a a beautiful venue to present a beautiful story yes we want to rec remind people that it is available on amazon barnes and noble and other online booksellers Patty, why don't you talk a little bit now about your activism, if you would? <laughs> okay, well, I've been an activist for many, many years. I guess my first step into real activism was becoming a vegetarian in 1970. I decided I wanted to live a nonviolent life, and I realized the violence was on my plate, and I stopped eating all animals that day. Of course, it took me a while to become vegan because I didn't even know the word for a few years after that. But um, so that was my first step. But um, as far as protesting, my first protests were um, against fur and against vivisection, actually. They were doing experiments at the Museum of uh, Natural History, Natural Museum of History in New York City, where they were experimenting on cats. To, um, oh. to find out why humans have sexual dysfunction. So that really didn't make much sense. Of course, none of vivisection makes sense. Um, and we closed that down and look at what's happening with fur. So from there, I've gotten involved in all of the different crimes we do against animals. I co-founded Animal Acres, which is a farmed animal sanctuary now. It is part of Farm Sanctuary outside of Los Angeles. I started an animal museum, which I'm 
I'm sorry to say has closed, but I'd really like to get that started again. And I tell us about the animal. Sorry, tell us about the animal museum. I have not heard about that, and, and you want to get it back going. So talk about it a little bit. Yes, well, I've had this. I had this idea for ages. Once I learned that there was a spam museum, I was like, "Oh my gosh, we have to have an animal museum." I mean, a spam museum. So it, it's in a, and I have collected art about animals for ages. I will show you behind me. This is a Suko piece about hunting. Oh. So I have some amazing. I don't wait, about Patty. Let me see if I can go back in and a little closer. Yeah. Now it's yeah. A very difficult for us to see. So please describe. Okay, I see an animal on the table. Just yeah. describe it. If okay. you sit to the, if you come to the other side, come the side. to the other side of the screen. Yeah. Okay. And go okay. ahead and describe it. Okay. Well, let me describe. These are all hunters. And then, whoops, sorry, it's okay. okay. Okay, so these are all hunters here, and here is a deer, a bear, another bear, a turkey, uh, a possum, rabbit, and birds. All some of the animals that hunters love to kill. Right. So um, that's that's the piece. It's pretty pretty powerful. So anyway, um, we need an animal museum. We need to spotlight. And what would be in there? Just art. Animals. Would it be, would it be artwork like sort of like we see uh, in other museums? What would be the? It would just be art, or would it be other things in the museum? Well, just, well I, you know, I, 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 it would be a lot of art, but I'd like a lot of activity there. Maybe a kids uh, section for art there to encourage them, which is why we did the book. We want to encourage kids to continue to care about animals like they do when they're really young and not right. let grown-ups kill that side of them. But um, yeah, and have different exhibits based on the different things that we do to animals, like uh, an exhibit about vivisection and teaching. I want to show tools that are used in torturing animals. Paul Watson years ago sent me a hack -a pick and that is the um, tool that they use to club the baby seals to death. Oh so God. I want to, you know, like um, uh, do an exhibit of the mass uh, tools of mass destruction. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it's an idea that we need to get going again. And I want David to run the museum. <laughs> I was going to ask David about <laughs> I would I love to. input. Would you have to give us some input? Oh, of some course. Ideas no, I would art. love to. I mean, it's it's just sort of like we don't know these things are going on, like how oblivious most of us live our lives. And we don't realize how much of an impact that we're having on animals. So I remember Patty bringing this idea up. She did do the museum. It closed down. But we've been talking for ages about um, doing an, a traveling art show that would show some things that it's right. hard to look at some of it, but a lot of the artwork is beautiful in its own right. The illustrations, the photographs, the ways that we impact the lives of animals. So the museum would be a wonderful place to bring people together, to have lectures, to you know, have Paul come in and talk about his work. Everybody that would give them a platform. And there's not a lot of venue for that right now. There's increasing because online there's a lot of... Um, different ways of getting your words out there, but um, a central hub where people could come and LA would be a great place to do it. But yeah, no, uh, throughout the centuries, artwork has had animals as the central um, object of discussion and why not? It would be an absolute amazing thing. I don't know why nobody's done it so far, but um, I think that Patty would be the right person. And uh, yeah, I'd love to run it. <laughs> My other, idea great. Is, is, um, my other idea is to have a museum that would take out all the art that has animals in it to see how important animals are in our world. So a lot of ideas. Got to keep working to get them done. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about it and the thing about the work both of you are doing is so uh, much what we want to bring forward in this show to folks. We want people to take action. And a lot of times people know, you know, they'll sign a petition and that's really important. And there's so many different ways you can take action. 
But from a personal level, it can also be quite enriching when you find your passion and you use that to forward humanity, be it the animals, be it in any case, we always talk here because we're, we feel so it's so important to protect animals. They're so underserved, but using your creativity for the good and using your talents for your activism, I think it's really inspiring. And it also people, if it, it's, it makes you feel good. What do you guys say about that? Patty, weigh in on that if you would. Well, I think each of us have, have gifts to use and to help the world become a kinder, better planet, and especially for the animals who really have it so bad. Did you know that 96% of Earth's biomass is populated by humans and livestock? They're 4% of the Earth's biomass is left for wildlife. This is a wow. terrible thing for all of us. Yeah, that is really incredible. And maybe this is a good time to share, again, the work of um, Captain Paul Watson by showing his website here. I'm going to navigate around for a moment. Um, if anyone wants to make a donation and, you know, it could be no matter the amount, it can help so much. And we are, like he says, if the oceans die, we die. We There's no, you know, Earth 2.0 or anything like that. We have to save this earth and we have to save it now. And you guys are doing such an amazing job with what you're bringing out to the public. And like you said, children's books are very effective, David. You said that because uh, children influence their parents. We see that all the time. They'll mm -hmm. influence their parents to become vegans. Yep. Do you want to weigh in on that a little bit about how you can uh, go through the children? to reach the parents? Well, I think just being a good example, a good example of kindness and a good example of uh, 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 keeping um, your ethics and your morals in line with the way you live your life. So it's just, uh, it's amazing when a kid will react to a puppy in with kindness and respect. And that's sort of uh, taken away from us as we get older. So why not foster that relationship? So. Um, I think that artwork can completely give people a safe place to go, their imagination. I remember when I was little, I used to read a lot of books about animals and I would just be just brought to this other place where I was there and uh, my imagination was just, just beginning. So I think that it's a vital time in people's lives to foster that, that um that inner life so that you can be a warrior for the animals. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm almost envious of somebody like a Paul that found their calling so early in life and was pursued it till the very, this very day. It's a, uh, it's a powerful thing when you see somebody that's so um, driven and so tunnel vision to do one thing. And it's just an amazing experience to interact with people like that. Yes, and I would like one of you, maybe, I, I think, uh, David, if you could hold up the book, because some of the illustrations are a landscape two-pagers. Right. And people can't, and I'm going to bring you back on here. Yeah. So even go a little closer, a little closer to us, and up, up a little. Oh, that's pretty good. Over to, uh, you're right, you're right. Oh, good. Stay there if you can. But really, folks, just go buy the book. I mean, it's just, oh, that's, I know. these are really extraordinary. You must turn these into prints that people can purchase. I will. I yeah. agree. These, and I let agree. us know when you're ready to do that so we can have you back on, both of you. Yeah. So this I is mean, the part where Bucky and his family are building. That was so heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. When you read that part, Patty, the way you wrote that was extraordinary. Um, yeah. Where the, you know, you see he's pl he's playing with, and then he gets he's playing in the water, and he's watching them, mm -hmm. and suddenly he gets an interaction mm -hmm. from Bucky, and he's with the family there that summer, and they become friends. And then he comes back next year and you want to take it from there and just, it's just heart wrenching. Yes, it is heart wrenching. 
He was so looking forward to it and he had studied about beavers all year and he was heartbroken. And uh, it was sad that his father couldn't give him the comfort that he needed, but that does happen. There are parents that don't give the comfort. There are those that do. I just saw a video of a girl, a young girl who said, I don't want to eat animals anymore. And the parents said, we will never make you eat animals anymore. We right. Promise. That's, that's the kind of parenting that I think we need more of. And I think though, in this case, it, it kind of spurred him on. It gave him the fuel. Yes. And we all have to learn from that. Don't you think so? I mean, I, I think we all have to draw from that. Not that we have. Yes. To right. And just how many, and how many, young, how, how many young people have that um, determination? You know, it's like, I think nowadays kids are getting older, younger, but it's just, yeah. it, it's hard yeah. to have that sort of determination that young and stick by what you feel is, is right. So it's amazing that people like Paul had that and they just never wavered. It's just uh, well, inspiring. Yeah, I do want to add, and I sometimes wonder if I should have put a little bit of some of it in here, is that his mother was very supportive of his efforts with animals and had even given him a book called The Kindness Club. Oh. So he did have one parent that was very understanding and nurturing of that side of Paul. And then they, he had his father who wasn't at all. So yeah, but I, I wanted to add that in the yeah. in the front. Mm -hmm. We made this decision for this because we liked it because we were hoping that every kid would be able to relate to Paul not having a face here, that that could be me, you know, that could right. be me. So I, I thought that was pretty clever of us. And it's a great cover, I think. I think it's amazing. And I hope to see more work from both of you. I don't know if I was able to get this in before, but I could also see it as an animated short. Yeah, I that could be that easily would... animated from the illustrator. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for Disney to call. <laughs> yeah, or some other independent might want to uh, partner with you. Yeah. 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 So um, anyway, it was great having you on. Is there any last words you would like to share? I did want to go through a couple of the comments real quick. We have some amazing people watching. Uh, wow, we have Moses watching from Uganda. Moses. And he is, of course, one of the founders or the founder of Kiyotera Vegan Youth uh, Foundation. And we also have others tuning in and commenting. And we want to thank everyone. I also want to mention Unchained TV. You can download the app. Very easily, just go to watch.unchainedtv. It's completely free, and you will find more programming like this, interviews, talk shows, but much, much more. We have cooking shows. We have documentaries. Uh, we have music videos. We have all sorts of entertainment, so please tune in. Um, so go ahead, guys. Any last words? I'm going to throw it out to both of you. I'm just th very happy for you for uh, focusing on this book. I hope it um, gets into the hands of a lot of kids. I hope it uh, inspires. And um, yeah, any uh, anybody that wants to pitch a animated series or <laughs> a series of books, we are open to that. So thank you so much for having a channel that focuses on this type of work. Oh, thank you guys for being on. Patty, any last words? Well, thank you, Lindsay and Unchained TV for having us on. And of course, thank you, Captain Paul Watson for oh, yeah. the incredible hero that you are, for the inspiration that you give and that have this book becomes come real. And um, please buy the book, share it with your kids. Adults seem to be liking it too. So, you know, let's save this planet. Let's save all of us on it. Yes, yes. And I want to just put this up for a moment here to give people a chance to see. Uh, and it's Captain Paul Watson Foundation.org. Yes, I just want to check that real quick. Yes. Oh, no, it's Paul Watson Foundation.org. I got it right here. So, yes, that's the uh, address there. 
And thank you for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next week with the Action Hour. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.